Why hello there anxious cynic back again and oh hang on no why hello there anxious cynic here back for another my animator 2 tutorial and today we're going to be covering lighting and glow so we've got this scene here and i've made it nighttime so that we can focus on actual lighting sources instead of just using the sun so one thing i want to do though is actually add a light source to this scene in terms of visually so i'm going to go over here i'm going to go to our blocks and i'm going to type in redstone I'm going to go to the lamp and I want it to be lit so I'm going to click the lit option you can see it change there create and I'm going to slap it up here this is kind of too big looking you know obviously it's going to be big like this in Minecraft but in my animator I can make it smaller so I actually want to make it like a small little lamp there and I think that's a good enough placement we'll just leave it right there okay so now that that's set up I'm going to go ahead and turn on rendering and you'll see since we don't have any real lights or anything in our scene nothing changed here and this isn't really going to emit any light we can go over here to our material tab i go down here and we have emissive and if i turn this up you'll see that it gets brighter but it doesn't really seem to actually emit any light so i'm just gonna make this let's see what well, let's go maybe 150 is that too much maybe 100 Oh no, I think maybe 125 is gonna look good, but we'll leave it there for now. All right, so now we're gonna bring in an actual light source. So we're gonna go down here to light source, believe it or not. We're gonna create a point light and it's here in our scene. I'm just gonna plop it up here because I want this light to represent the light coming from this lamp here. And I'm just gonna try to position it. Now, first of all, we've got this lamp here creating shadows. It's a light source. We don't want it to create shadows. So I'm gonna click on it. I'm gonna go over here to the appearances tab and we're gonna turn off cast shadows and bada bing bada boom, it looks like a light source. Now with our light selected, you can see over here in the appearance tab, we have render shadows and I can turn that on or off. It's on by default and we actually do want this light to render shadows. So I'm gonna leave it on. You can see the effect there where it's not casting shadows, it is casting shadows. This is more realistic obviously, but there are uses for not rendering shadows from a light source, but we might get that to a little bit later or something. All right, so with this light selected, I'm going to go over here to the light tab. I'm going to change the color because this is kind of a, a yellow hue and this light is white. So we want to make this kind of an orangish yellow or something in there. And we're gonna kind of bring it in. Like you can see how it's changing the color of the light there. And I just want to get it to where it kind of matches the hue of the texture there and then of course we have our other options here for the size and the size of the light is going to kind of determine the sharpness of the shadows so let me actually get rid of this for now let's turn this rendering on so we can see a little bit better here and you can see the shadows here of steve right there it's kind of soft so let's turn this down to zero and you'll see that the shadows are sharp so the bigger the light source the more soft the shadows are going to be uh, I think two actually is probably a decent number for this. Now another thing we need to adjust here maybe is Steve. I think we may still have some of the uh, subsurface properties. Yeah, it's at uh, one. So if I turn that to zero, you'll see that Steve is kind of a little bit more flatly shaded. But if I go back to one where we had it, you'll see we get a little bit of light bleed. We're getting a little bit of that uh, kind of edge rim light on them and that's probably what we want so before i go and tweak more of these settings here i'm going to finish adding more light sources to our scene because i feel like it needs a bit more typically uh, a scene will have a kind of at least like a bare minimum of a three point light source setup so i'm going to go ahead and add another point light to our scene here i'm going to uh, put it over here because as you can see in our scene we have two torches now if they're not on camera then we don't really have to worry about the fact that there's two torches but since we got them, we're going to use those as reference for lights in our scene. And basically this one, we want to create a fill, fill light, F-I-L-L, -L, fill. Uh, if you see here, this is kind of what I'm going to consider my key light. Maybe you would consider this a, a rim light, I'm not sure. But without going into technical terms like that, let's just move back on over here. And what we want is to have this kind of be our main light source that's casting that since it's going to be in our shot let me bring our camera back up you can see this is the light in our shot so let's put on rendering here and you can see that this is actually way too bright so we also want to make this one kind of a hue and we don't want this one to be so affecting in our scene i'm going to consider this to be kind of a fill light where i want it to just fill in those shadows so if I make this invisible you see how we have all of this darkness here and that might be realistic for only having this one light source but for this particular shot I may want it to be a little more evenly lit so I'm going to turn this on I'm going to reduce 
the range a bit. I don't want it affecting so far over, maybe something like that where it's just kind of reaching Steve's arm there. I can turn the strength down just a bit. Maybe we'll make it about 50 and you know we can keep adjusting some of these settings here, our fade size. We want to kind of just get this where we want it to be for the type of light we need in our scene here. I'm okay with that for the moment. So now we've got a little bit more of an evenly lit scene, but Steve's face is kind of just not really popping for me. So what I want to do is actually duplicate this. I'm going to hit control D and you'll see that we now have two lights overlapping there. If I move one, you'll see we just uh, created two lights there and we have this other torch. So I'm going to use it as a reference as well. Move this over. And it doesn't really have to be like in line with it because these torches are not in the shot right now. So I can move this around until I get the lighting that I want on my Steve. And we've got a lot of overlapping shadows and things happening. So let's see what happens if I turn off render shadows on this one. And it looks okay. We can determine whether we want those shadows to show or not. You can see it's kind of making shadows cast from our glass over there. I'm not really sure I'm digging it, but I'll leave the shadows on for now. We'll see what we're working with. And I'm just going to move this around in the scene, kind of figure out where I want things to be. I want my shadows to look good if I'm going to be casting them. And we can adjust this range here. Once again, we may want it to be a little subtle. Let's just make this about 80 and then we can up this fade size so it's not quite as harsh on the whole scene there. Something like so. And then if we get rid of this, we can see that we're just kind of filling in Steve's face a little bit with the light. So for this scene, you know, it's kind of a, a dimly lit cabin here. So I don't really mind this look too much. Maybe it's not quite polished, but we'll say that that's what we want. And uh, what I do want to add though is like the, the outside here is a little bit lifeless. So I'm going to go up here and add a new light source. I'm going to just try maybe a point light or a spotlight. Wow, I just said the complete opposite one when it was a 50-50 chance. And we're going to actually come out and this is going to be our moon essentially. So let's go over here. The moon isn't really a blue color, but when it comes to movie magic, it's blue. So let's just make it a blue right there. Kind of angle it down. Let's see where we are in our scene here. Uh, we got to figure out where we want this to cast. So let's just kind of play with it here. I want to see it here. It would be nice to see it here, but I don't really want to add too many lights into our scene. Having four is already going to affect our rendering times and the performance of my animator. So the fewer lights you can use really is better. So do more daytime scenes so you don't have to light everything manually. Anyway, so now we can see that we get a little bit of life here on the, uh, the window. So if I turn this on or off, see how we just got these like kind of dead shadows here? Turn that on. Now we've got this nice kind of blue hue coming in, some some nice backlighting onto our scene there. And of course we can adjust certain things like let's say we want the size to be a little bigger. If we go up to four or something like that. This is a pretty subtle effect, but kind of just soften those shadows a little bit because the moon is quite a distance away. We can adjust a lot of these settings, but it really depends on, you know, how your spotlight's set up, where it is, and how it's angled and all that stuff. But I think we're getting a good enough effect here. We could adjust the strength. Let's see if we go up to 200%. You'll see it's a lot brighter out there. And if I go to 50%, you can see this is a much subtler effect, more subtle effect. I think 100 is actually not bad, but it does look a bit strong. Let me see if I go to like 75. That's not too bad. We can adjust the color here. Maybe I want it to be a little bit darker. We don't necessarily have to have it be a bright blue. We can subtle that effect a little bit. So let's just call that done for our lighting setup for now. Let's go in here and what I want to do is make this lamp a little more realistic. You can see that it's just kind of there and it's bright and that's great. But under the appearance tab here, we can go down here and we can enable glow. Oh, we turn that on. You can see that it's actually glowing a bit. Let's turn this up here so that we can see things a little bit better. And uh, what I'm going to do now is go to project properties. We're going to go to our render settings. We're going to go to custom. So if you watched the last video, you may recall a lot of these and what they do. I'm going to just turn on ambient occlusion. We're going to turn on indirect lighting. Boop. Get a little bit more of some light bounces there. And I may want to actually adjust the precision and maybe the strength a bit. Let's, let's see what happens if we go to 200. 
Maybe we'll try about 400% on that. I don't know. I think it looks okay. It's a very subtle difference, but, you know, we'll go with that. And uh, to the meat and potatoes here, let's go down to glow. We do have glow enabled. If I turn that off, then you won't see it, but we have glow enabled. Bring it down, and I'm going to enable secondary glow. Boop. You can see there, so that's really intensifying it, but I don't really feel like it's really glowing the way I want it to. So I can adjust the setting, like the secondary glow, and I feel like the secondary is really giving us more of the glow of the interior here, and I want to see more of the outside, so I'm going to adjust the radius of the initial glow. I'm going to make it big. Let's try like 1200. And now I'm going to change the intensity here. Let's see if we go up and down. That's it's not too bad there. Maybe I'll just try like maybe 125 on the intensity for the initial glow. Down here on our secondary glow, I'm going to change this. Maybe we want to just give it a little bit more like a subtle kind of flare there. So it's like 10% maybe and we can adjust the intensity of that. Maybe what, around 35, 40% looks okay there. So to me, you know, we can adjust these settings and play with them more, but I'm not going to take up time just playing with it. So we could probably achieve a better effect, but I like this because we got a lot of uh, kind of surrounding glow, but also some more intensity in the light itself. So if I turn that off, that's our kind of just dead bright light in the scene. Turn on glow, boom. We actually have a little bit of an atmosphere here. So I'm going to call that pretty much done on our lighting and our uh, glow in the scene. Now there's two other things that we need to focus on in terms of the actual final result that we're going to get and one is samples as you may recall from our previous video and our shadows. So if I drop down shadows you'll notice that uh, the spotlight and the point light are very small buffer sizes and since we're only using those types of lights for our scene we want them to be bigger buffers. So what I'm going to do is actually render this out with a couple of different settings and show you guys what the difference is. So here is the first render and this is with the default settings that we had. This is 24 samples with like small and very small buffers on the uh, point light and the spotlight. And you can see here we've got a decent looking scene. It's not too horrible. Um, we got these kind of sharp lines here which I'm not really liking but if we go to the next example, and this is with 75 samples with very big and big buffers on our lights, and you'll see here that things just look a little bit sharper, a little bit smoother and higher quality. If I just kind of flip back and forth between these two, you can see some of those differences there. We've got a little bit more uh, better shadows here, better in lines. If you notice uh, this over here on the left window, you see this kind of a little bit lower quality, kind of softer looking shadow. If we go to our higher samples and stuff, it's just a little more polished looking. It's a little bit less scattered, a little cleaner, basically. Maybe that's a, a better word for it. You can see the lighting across Steve over here on our lower samples with our smaller buffers. If I uh, do that, then it's just a little bit more of a gradual, just a better quality result that we're getting there. Now, of course, having those higher samples, 24 versus 75, does make a notable difference in the rendering time. A lot of people are complaining about the render times of Minimator 2, but that's kind of the price you're paying for the higher quality rendering, unfortunately. All right, so that's going to do it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Hope you learned something. Hopefully I didn't make you dumber. And with that, I'm going to call it. So uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.